As soon as he gets out the car, he immediately puts his hand on his hip and he's like, turn around and put your hands behind your back. And I'm like, damn. And in my head, there's so much screaming happening. <laughs> hey y'all, I hope you're living life to the fullest in your own way. But if not, I'm here to spread love, light, and laughter with no delay. I have a question for y'all. Have y'all ever been arrested? It has happened to me twice. Y'all already know y'all gonna get the most real from me and y'all already know I'm gonna be 100% transparent with y'all. So I'm gonna be very honest about what happened, where I made my mistakes and hopefully somebody can learn from this and not make the same mistakes in the future. Being arrested is not fun. It's nothing that I would want someone to experience. The two different times I did get arrested, it was because of mistakes that I had made and I knew that I was going wrong in both situations and I got the consequences. My first time was when I was in college. I was a freshman or a sophomore. I believe I was a freshman. Even though I was getting, my, uh, my housing was being paid for, my classes and books and stuff was being paid for by financial aid, I still needed like leisure money and I still needed some type of way of providing for myself outside of college. I was doing everything that I could do to find a job. I was applying for a whole bunch of different places. I finally got a call from a restaurant in the South. I'm not sure if y'all know the name of it is Cheddar's. Um, I think it's more of like a Southern chain, but I got a call from Cheddar's, from the manager at Cheddar's, and then had my interview. While I was talking to the back of house manager, she was telling me that I needed to purchase my uniform. Cheddars, we had to wear an all black button down. We had to wear black flags. We had to have black socks. We had to have on a black belt. And we had to have slip resistant shoes on. I'm not sure if y'all know, I'm sure servers know, slip resistant shoes are not cheap at all. So I'm sitting there and I'm listening to all of this and I'm thinking to myself like, how am I gonna afford all this stuff? Because she was like, because they wanted me to start the very next day. They wanted me to come in and start my training in my all black and in my slip resistant shoes. I ended up leaving the interview, went to Walmart. I only had probably about like 30, $40 in my account at the time. I'm in Walmart and I'm walking around and I'm looking at the different prices for all of the stuff that the manager said I would need to buy. It was probably around like between 70 and $80. At the time I didn't even have that to afford my uniform for work y'all. So I'm sitting there texting my friend, <laughs> Jeremy. At the time, he was such a bad influence because he tells me to just take it. And I'm sitting there, I'm in Walmart, I'm texting him, and I'm like, oh, no, I can't, you know, I can't do that. I can't, you know, I'm not gonna feel right about that. So, he ended up talking me into doing it anyway because he told me how to do it and the way he told me how to do it made me think that I could get away with it. What he told me to do was take the sale box of shoes because there are shoes at Walmart that are on sale and the price sticker that you scan is on the box. So he told me to get the slip resistant shoes, take out the sale shoes from the sale box, put in the slip resistant shoes and then go from there. I took it upon myself to take it a little bit of a step further because I couldn't afford the shirt, the belt, and um, I also needed some black pants. What I did was I switched the shoes on the shoe aisle and I went and got my shirt, my all black button down shirt. I was battling with myself in my head whether or not if I wanted to follow through with what I was doing while I was doing it, you know? So I took the shirt and I'm walking around Walmart with the box of shoes and the shirt in my hand. I'm just walking around trying to find somewhere secluded that I can put the shirt in the box with the shoes. That way I'll just scan the box, pay for the sales shoes, and then buy everything else that I needed to buy. I ended up on the like camping aisle, the outdoors, camping, kind of hunting aisle, and I was going back and forth. I was literally pacing back and forth, going back and forth with myself, trying to 
think if I wanted to do it or not. I ended up sending the box on the shelf. I slipped the shirt in and then went back to the men's department because I still had to get my belt, my pants and stuff like that. And in my mind, at this point, I've gotten away with it, you know, because nobody stopped me from putting the shirt in the box. Nobody has stopped me all throughout Walmart. You know, I've been walking around and nobody said nothing, nobody stopped me. So I'm feeling good on the inside and I'm going to self-checkout with all my stuff. I'm gonna pay for the sale shoes, I'm gonna pay for the bill, and I'm gonna pay for the pants. So I'm at self-checkout, I do all of that. As I'm walking out, y'all know Walmart has two sets of sliding doors. The first set of slide, sliding doors, I made it through. And then the second set of sliding doors, I got one footstep away from going outside. As soon as I took that second step to go outside, I was like bum rushed by three different people. It was two men and one woman. They ran up on my ass. They were like, sir, 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 stop right there. We gotta check your bag, blah, blah, blah. We saw you on camera doing certain things and we gotta, we gotta check your bag. As soon as they ran up on me, y'all, and I didn't run and I didn't think to like try to get away or do, I, I didn't know what to do because I, I knew I was caught. You know, I had never done anything like this before in the past. So when it happened to me, when I got caught, I just froze up because I was just in such a state of shock. So they're walking me to the back and when I finally make it back there, the police officer is already there waiting on me, y'all. As soon as I seen the police officer, I immediately pulled my phone out because in my mind, I was thinking like, you know, they're gonna take all my stuff. I didn't, I didn't know if I was gonna be arrested. I didn't know what was gonna happen. So I just had to let someone know what was going on. So I pulled my phone out and immediately I had to text Jeremy. I said, friend, they got me, send. That's it. <laughs> Two seconds later, the police officer was like, take everything out of your pockets. I gotta take your phone, I gotta take this, I gotta take that. Um, I'm placing you under arrest for shoplifting and you know, all that stuff. I didn't like the officer because I ended up asking him if he could, because he told me that he parked in the back of Walmart. So I ended up asking him if we could go through the back so I can avoid the embarrassment of walking all the way through Walmart. He tells me no. He then goes on to be even more petty and tells me that he's going to take his car from behind Walmart, park it in the front, come back to get me just so we can walk all the way through Walmart. I was like, bruh, like, so I fill out all my paperwork and stuff for Walmart. They took my picture, y'all. They put my picture up on like the shoplifting wall. Like if I came back in there, the camera would see me and like they would, they told me I couldn't come back to that Walmart. It was so much shit. And while I was in the back doing my paperwork, one of the employees, you know, because Walmart has um, secret shoppers, um, people who walk around acting like they're shopping, but they're looking for people who are shoplifting. They ended up telling me that from the time that I came into the store all the way up until the time I ended up on the outdoors out, that they were watching me the whole time. They said they were watching me from camera and they had secret shoppers around me, like, you know, going past the aisle, they'll see me. And then keep on going, then they'll turn around, go back past the aisle and they'll see me. One of the employees in the back ended up telling me that I was a person of interest because I was on the camping aisle for so long. Yeah, I was literally pacing back and forth trying to decide whether or not I want to go through with it or not. They said that I was on the camping aisle for so long and I left the aisle with nothing, you know? And on top of that, not a lot of black people camp and like hunt and do a lot of outdoorsy things. At least I don't think so, especially not in Mississippi. So that happened. The police officer put the handcuffs on me, walked me all the way through Walmart, through the whole store. And Hattiesburg is a small city. So if they see you getting arrested, then they know who you are getting arrested, you know? So I walked all the way through Walmart. He put me in the back of the car. When I got in the car, I mistakenly sat on the handcuffs and tighten them a little bit on my wrist. So they're like squeezing the bones in my wrist and I can't do nothing about it. It was crazy. So when we got to the precinct, they booked me, they took my picture, they took my fingerprints and all that stuff. I was in the holding cell and y'all, the holding cell was literally four stone walls and it was a metal bench sticking out of the wall and it was like a toilet in the corner. 
I was ignoring everybody. I was like mad at myself and I was nervous. So much was going through my mind at the time that I just didn't want to talk to anybody. I stayed quiet and stayed to myself the whole time. When I finally got my one phone call, I ended up calling because I didn't know people's numbers by heart like that, for real, for real. So I think I ended up calling my ex. I think I ended up calling my ex. We were broken up at the time. I ended up asking him to reach out to Cliff and Jeremy to see if they would be able to come and get me out. You know, I didn't want to put that burden on him to have to come out. You know, we're broken up. We were already like separated. But his, his number was the only one that I knew by heart. I don't think it was done because one of the police officers came up to me about six hours later and told me that there were two people trying to bail me out. Those two people were Cliff and Jeremy. Cliff and Jeremy ended up bailing me out. I don't think my ex reached out to them only because when I talked to them, Jeremy was telling me that the last message he got from me was, friend, they got me. After he got that message, he was steadily trying to text me and call me and things like that, but it wasn't working out. After that, he said that him and Cliff called every single precinct in the area, in the surrounding area, trying to find me. And once they found me, they figured out how much my bail was, they paid it for me, and they got me out. Um, Y'all, it was a crazy experience. It was my first time being arrested. My mindset was on some, I ain't gonna never do this shit again, you know? So I had to go back to court for that. I had to just pay a fine, I think. And then they expunged it from my, from my record. And at the end of the day, it was my fault. I shouldn't have gone through with it. I was thinking that I could get away with it just because of the circumstances. I wasn't thinking clearly because I was so focused on having exactly what I needed by the next day so I can start my job. But it didn't work out like that. Jeremy was definitely a bad influence on me, but it was my fault for listening to him, you know? I should have just asked anybody for the money and then just paid them back. You know, I was gonna be a server. I was gonna make tips and stuff like that. I could have paid them back for my uniform. Don't shoplift kids. The second time I was arrested was in November of 2019. Thanksgiving of 2019, I went back down to Alabama so I could visit my family for Thanksgiving. I flew to Atlanta. My best friend was staying in Atlanta at the time, Alex. Shout out to Alex, what's up Alex? I flew there, he drove me to Mobile, Alabama um, because we're both from Alabama. The end of the trip comes and we're on our way back to Atlanta. And from Mobile to Atlanta, it's about a five hour drive. On our way back, about three hours in, Alex has a really bad problem with swerving. That really bothers my spirit. Every time I would like lay down or try to go to sleep or close my eyes just for a little bit, he would like start swerving over. And you know, on the highway, those little things on the side of the road, they go do 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 Every time I would hear that, it would scare me and I would wake up and be like, friend, you good? Like, what's up? Like, are you okay? And that kept happening constantly, you know? So I ended up telling him about three hours in, I was like, friend, just let me drive. Please just let me drive because I'll get us there safely. I'm ready to get back home because at, at the time we were on our way to go out before my flight. So this is around midnight, one o'clock in the morning while we're on our way back to Atlanta. You know, we're dressed to the T, we're looking prim and proper and things. Mind you, my license was suspended at the time because of a ticket that I got right before I moved to New York. It was some type of traffic ticket. I got a traffic ticket in New Orleans and my court date for that traffic ticket was three days after I was supposed to move to New York. So I moved to New York October 17th and then my court date for that ticket was October 20th. I knew I wasn't gonna go to that court date because I couldn't afford to fly back just to go to court. So they end up suspending my license and they put a warrant out for my arrest. I knew all of this was going on, to be honest. I was in New York, I wasn't driving a car, I was taking public transportation, so I never thought that I would run into the police again at any anytime soon, you know. I thought I would just pay my ticket and get it taken care of when I was able to take care of it. I'm behind the wheel driving back to Atlanta and we only have about 30 minutes left. And even though I knew that my license was suspended and there was a warrant out for my arrest, I still stupidly 
I still decided to get behind the wheel because in my mind, you know, I thought that I was gonna be driving as safe as possible and that I wasn't gonna run into any police. I was going 95 and 80 and by the time I saw the police officer, it was too late for me to like slam on my brakes and try to, you know, make it look like I wasn't speeding. It was too late for me, so I just, I zoomed right on past him. As soon as I saw the officer, I started praying. I was like, Lord, please don't let this officer turn around. Please don't let this happen to me today. I was like, I gotta go to work tomorrow. I got, I got so much to do. About five seconds later, I see his car in the rearview mirror. I see the police car like do like this circle around and come behind me. And his headlights are like now behind me. When I saw those headlights, when I saw those headlights, my stomach sunk. Hold up, I'm so sorry to interrupt. But y'all, if y'all are enjoying listening to my stories, please do me a huge favor and like this video, give me a huge thumbs up, comment anything you want to down below, and definitely subscribe to my channel. Ain't that right? Y'all, the red and blue lights came on and all I heard was whoop whoop. <laughs> as soon as I heard that sound, I immediately, because Alex ass is on the side of me, knocked out in the passenger seat while all of this is happening. So I'm like, friend, friend, wake up, please wake up. So Alex wakes up, he's like, what, what's going on, what's up? And I'm like, friend, I think I'm about to get arrested. We're like looking all around the car, trying to make sure we don't have like paraphernalia in the car and because we were on our way to the club, we're trying to make sure um, we weren't drinking and driving, but we did have open bottles in the car. So we're trying to make sure that those are like hidden and stuff like that in case he searches the car. It was just a lot going on. Get pulled over. The officer walks up to the side of the car and says, license and registration. Alex gives me the registration out of the glove compartment. I give it to the officer and then I give him my New York state ID. Not even a license. I give him my state ID and he looks at it and he's like, New York? And looks at me and I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm, I travel down here for Thanksgiving. I'm trying to visit my family. We're on our way back to Atlanta so I can catch my flight. I have to work tomorrow, sir. I was like, you know, trying to talk my way out of the ticket. He wasn't trying to hear that shit. So he asked me to step out of the car while he runs my ID. Mind you, it's cold outside. I'm standing out there. I'm looking around. It's like two o'clock in the morning. Um, and I get a glimpse of Alex in the, the review mirror on the passenger side. And he's like looking at me through the mirror. He's like, like worried because things are looking bad. In the back of my head, y'all already knew what was about to happen. I knew he was about to arrest me because of the search warrant. As soon as he gets out the car, he immediately puts his hand on his hip and he's like, turn around and put your hands behind your back. And I'm like, damn. And in my head, there's so much screaming happening. <laughs> I'm like, no. I turn around, I put my hands behind my back. He puts on the handcuffs and y'all puts me in the back seat of the car. Because of my experiences from the first time I was arrested, I ended up asking him if I could at least get my phone, text someone, let them know what's going on, let them know what's happening, let them know where I'm going so people can be working trying to get me out. He said no. What he did was told Alex to come to the car and I gave Alex my lock code to my phone and Alex from there was able to reach out to my parents and reach the people that I needed him to reach in order to help me get out. Alex ended up following us to the precinct. They took my picture, they took my fingerprints, they made me take off my, my brown boots that I had on. I had to put on the slides that they give everybody that first comes in. And remember, we were on our way to the club, so we were dressed to the teeth. I had just got a fresh manicure that morning, so my nails are like all glistening and shiny and shit. They put me in the holding cell. Once I'm in the holding cell, I go to the corner, and this one was set up just like the one in Mississippi. It was stone walls, metal bench, toilet in the corner. I go to the corner, and I'm sitting there holding my thumbs and with my hands balled up because I don't want anybody to see my fresh ass manicure, you know? And I don't want nobody to be like, oh, that nigga gay, like, let's fuck with him. Even though I'm sure you could probably tell that I'm gay from when I walk in the room, but I didn't want to give nobody no opportunities. And I'm already dressed like I'm going to a club with some tight burgundy pants on with 
holes in the knees and a loose fitting shirt. So like my chest is showing. I was trying to be as low key as possible. And to be honest, everybody that was in a holding cell was chill as fuck. Like they were talking to me and this time I was going back and forth with them because I knew I was gonna be in that for a little minute. I'm still hiding my manicure. I'm still like chopping it up with the dudes that's in there. I'm constantly trying to get the attention of one of the police officers because I'm trying to figure out what's going on with my bail. You know, how much is my bail so I can go ahead and pay this and get up out of here. Because of what happened last time in Mississippi, I'm thinking that I'm only gonna pay, you know, 10% of what my bail is so I can at least get out. But because I was booked with my New York state ID, it had my New York address on it. I was considered a flight risk. What that means is in order for me to bail out, I would have to pay 100% of the bail, which at the time I think was like $3,000. And I didn't have $3,000, nobody around, around me had $3,000 to get me out. What happened was one of the police officers ended up blessing me to the fullest. I wish I knew his name so I could shout him out. He's the real MVP because he really helped my ass get up out of there. Let me stop right at the door. So I ended up talking with the officer and he told me that if I knew someone who lived in Georgia that I could use their address on my like booking information, that way I would only have to pay 10% of my bill. Alex at the time was staying with his auntie who lived in Georgia. So we ended up using her address. And what that means is I would only have to pay 10% of my bail but if i did not show up for my court date she would be responsible for the 2700 that was left over if i didn't show up now all of this didn't happen until about like 13 hours into me being into the holding cell like i had went through breakfast i had went to lunch there they fed us it was disgusting for breakfast i think they gave us like a piece of toast that was cut into two triangles they gave us some unseasoned grits they gave us i think like a fruit um and for lunch i think they had salisbury steak unseasoned unseasoned potatoes it wasn't appetizing at all i didn't eat breakfast or lunch because i just didn't have an appetite at all 17 hours later i finally got bailed out when i did get out I ended up finding out, and shout out to you, Alex. You are the most amazing best friend that anybody could ever have. Because, y'all, Alex literally sat outside that precinct for the full 17 hours, waiting on me to get out, calling people, letting my parents know what's going on, trying to figure out ways to get me out. Even when he wasn't talking to anybody, he still was in the parking lot sleep just so he can be as close to me as possible. I love you so much, friend. Thank you for that. So a few months later was my court date. I went to court and the judge told me that I could either do jail time or I could do 36 hours of community service, pay a $600 fine, get my license reinstated and renewed, and take a driving course online or in person. I chose the latter. Majority of the stuff that I needed to take care of was stuff that could be done online and stuff that I just had to pay for. The only thing I procrastinated on is the community service. My next court date was like that Tuesday coming up, but I didn't start doing my community service until the week before that. So that Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I did eight hours of community service at the Salvation here in New York and did my 36 hours. I literally submitted all my paperwork and proof of everything to the court the Monday before my court date. The lady called me on Tuesday and told me that everything was situated and that everything would be expunged from my record. So those experiences weren't the best for me to go through. And again, at the end of the day, both of those experiences were my fault. I take full responsibility for my actions. I did what I had to do to get both of those things expunged from my record. So from here on out, I have 
no future plans to be dealing with the police again. Comment down below if you've ever had any situation with the police or if you've ever been arrested before. I know there are some people out there that have experiences that are a thousand times worse than mine and there are some people that have experiences that are a little bit better than mine. So comment down below and let me know. I would love to read those stories. While you're at it, make sure you give this video a huge thumbs up, please. And if you wanna see more, Definitely subscribe to my channel and look out for those videos every Wednesday and Sunday. Love y'all. Peace.